There's been a radical difference in the way the United Kingdom and New Zealand have dealt with COVID-19. New Zealand has had less than 3,000 cases since the start of the pandemic, whereas the UK has had over 3 million. Now, New Zealand had quite a few advantages. They're a small population with many fewer travellers, but both countries are islands with well-established healthcare systems, and we thought one difference might be the way the leaders are communicating. Just compare these two. Everything you will all give up for the next few weeks, all of the lost contact with others, all of the isolation and difficult time entertaining children, it will literally save lives, thousands of lives. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. The worst case scenario is simply intolerable. It would re represent the greatest loss of New Zealanders' lives in our history, and I will not take that chance. I would rather make this decision now and save those lives and be in lockdown for a shorter period than delay, see New Zealanders lose loved ones and their contact with each other for an even longer period. You should not be meeting friends. If your friends ask you to meet, you should say no. You should not be meeting family members who do not live in your home. You should not be going shopping except for essentials like food and medicine. And you should do this as little as you can. I hope that you are all with me on that decision. Together we do have an opportunity to contain the spread and to prevent the worst. If you don't follow the rules, the police will have the powers to enforce them, including through fines and dispersing gatherings. What differences did you see? We thought one difference might be the amount of what's called autonomy support. Put simply, autonomy supportive leaders align their messages to your values. They show they care and they make goals feel realistic. They encourage followers to choose to act. Jacinta talks about how this is about saving lives and how New Zealanders are facing this together with their fellow countrymen and women. We are all now preparing as a nation to go into self-isolation in the same way that we have seen many other countries do. Staying at home is essential. It's a simple but highly effective way to constrain the virus. It denies it a place to go and will help give our healthcare system a fighting chance. The opposite of autonomy support is psychological control. This means following orders, doing things because someone else says you should have to or must follow rules. Now, leaders may use this strategy to command their followers to do what they're told. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Studies on self-determination theory have shown that controlling motivation doesn't work long term. We might feel pressured into doing what we're told straight away, but we usually get sick of being told what to do after a while. And instead, we do what we want to. Patterns to that effect have been replicated hundreds of times across education, sport, health and leadership. For citations, have a look in the description. But what about in a crisis? Could this kind of language have contributed to the problems in the UK? We tested whether autonomy support influenced people's support for a contact tracing app. We chose to measure attitudes towards an app because back when we conducted the study, the idea of a contact tracing app was still new. At the time, people were confused about exactly what the app would do and whether people would be required to download it. We presented messages that said people could choose to download the app to protect themselves and their families, or messages that they had to download the app in order to be a responsible citizen. To our surprise, this language didn't matter. It didn't influence their intention to download the app, their support for the government to fund it, or their chance of recommending it to others. We tested two separate groups, about 2,000 people total, and found that the level of autonomy support didn't really change their responses. But something else did. One of the biggest concerns with these apps was that the data would not be safe. People were worried about the government being able to track where they'd been or who they'd seen. We tested how much this mattered by changing what people were told about the app. Some were told that the data would be secure, with your identity preserved, and destroyed within 21 days. Others were told that the data would be owned by the government and could be used for other important purposes and would be kept for later. People radically preferred the app where the data was safe. As you can see, when the data was safe, people were more likely to download the app, want the government to fund it and recommend it to their friends. We think this is a couple of things about messaging during a pandemic. 
People obviously care about their own safety. Our findings show that their data safety is an important motivator even when weighed up against public health benefits. Leaders who highlight how public health behaviors will not just protect the community but also keep individuals safe may better appeal to people's self-protective instincts. When it comes to digital technologies, governments can allay fears by promising to protect data and make source code transparent so people can trust that their data is safe. We found that both Boris and Jacinta might be able to get compliance over the short term, particularly for one-off behaviors like downloading an app. It's possible that in the chaos and confusion of a global pandemic, people don't mind firm and clear messaging occasionally. Providing too much autonomy, too many choices may be confusing and create unclear norms about what's expected. But you can still provide that clear structure alongside autonomy and safety. We think that over the long term, leaders can best galvanize their followers by accompanying rules with clear rationales and appeal to their intrinsic value. Basically, why do these rules benefit me? and the people that I care about. Doing so is more likely to make people feel like, even when they are following rules, they're following for reasons they care about, rather than just to avoid a punishment. After all, we need people to adopt many public health behaviors for months on end, so anything we can do to keep people motivated over the long term is worth doing. It's okay to make things a rule so it's an obvious social norm, but following those rules should be helping me and my community. If you have any questions about the paper or want to get in touch, please see the details in the description.